Hey, what's going on guys? It's another beautiful day here in Orlando, Florida. Right now we're at Disney Springs. Um, it used to be called Downtown Disney, and to be honest, I actually prefer that name. Uh, I honestly don't even know what we're doing. Hey, what are we doing here, man? Looking for jobs. So apparently, I'm with a couple of people right now. Uh, Nav here is my roommate. I don't know if you guys seen him in the vlog before, but I guess they're looking for jobs. But um, I just want to show you guys how beautiful this place is. Um, again, they had changed it from downtown Disney to Disney Springs, so everything kind of got renovated. So this is the first time me seeing everything. So I guess I'm excited to show you guys. Like we always do with this town, 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 town. Niggas a CLD won't even get pulled over in they new V. The good life, let's go on a living spree. Shit, they say the best things in life are free. The good life, it feel like Atlanta, it feel like LA, it feel like Miami, it feel like NY. Summertime shy. Ah. Knock all your hands up in the sky. So I wrote the good, y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood, Ferrari. And she got the good, and she got that ass, I got to look sorry. Alright guys, so I always get a ton of questions of people asking me what type of tools I use for what I do, stuff like what type of sewing machine that I use, even down to what size needles that I use. So I just wanted to take this time out right now to kind of briefly describe to you the stuff that I use to make these custom hats that I do. So starting off with any type of work environment, you always need your desk. Here I'm using just like a regular plastic kind of like picnic style desk or, or table which serves as my little work area right here. This cutting mat I've had for years like man this is probably like my first cutting mat. Obviously you can tell that it's all like worn out and stuff like that. This is from all like the adhesive from other projects that I do and stuff like that. And if you look really closely I don't even know if you can tell but you can see like all the cut marks right underneath all the glue stuff. But um, I think that every single work environment has to have a good work desk this just happens to be where everything gets cut and kind of put together at before it gets to the sewing machine so right here i have all of my all of my thread as you can see uh put on like one of these pegboards i just screwed into the wall and the pegboard is like not actually against the wall but kind of kind of spaced out with like this little spacer right here which allows maybe like a half an inch of space in between the wall and the pegboard. That serves the reason for this thing right here. These little peg things, I don't even know what they're called, but they stay here and those spacers give it just a little bit of space away from the wall to kind of fit that in there. But um, this right here, this is obviously, everyone has one of these at home, take out all the lint. Scissors, these scissors, man, like even though like they're a cheap pair of scissors, they actually serve their purpose like a million times over. Box cutter, I don't know what I use that for. Stencils for the for the straps that I use. Uh, these scissors, believe it or not, like when you see these scissors, you think like, oh shit, like they're like super heavy duty, high quality, but to be honest, they hurt your hands. Uh, they don't really cut very well. And like when I'm trying to cut in with my hands, like it just cuts off circulation to my fingers. It's not fun to use. This right here, oh my God. If I had one tool in my entire arsenal that made my job so much faster and increased productivity by like a hundred fold, it has to be this thing right here. This is called like a rotary cutter. Uh, yep, that's what it says right there, rotary cutter. And this thing, this blade is really freaking sharp. It replaced my scissors like almost all together. This thing can replace your scissors no matter what. If you have this, and a cutting board, you're good. These right here is what I make my stencils out of. These like little plastic, almost like the same material that like a brim will be made out of. And the sizing, it goes with every, like any type of different skin that I'm using, whether it be lamb skin or anything like that. It just has its own shape to it. And the formula for the, for the right size, I had to do by trial and error. Even if I wanted to tell you guys, I wouldn't even know how to describe it to you guys again everyone is always asking me about the sewing machine and I made a previous um, I guess tribute to this type of sewing machine that I have right here on my other channel which was like three years ago but this is kind of gonna be a, like a like an update to that and I have to be honest with you guys this sewing machine is a workhorse 
It is a Juki DDL8700. Is it? 8700. It's the like the non-computerized version. And um, let me just show you guys actually. So boom, like this thing has went through war with me. I'm telling you, I have never had to service it. I have never had to replace the oil or anything like that. It just works. And to be honest, the the $700 that I spent on it with the shipping and, and the table included, it was well worth every single dime I've ever spent. This light is awesome, except for it doesn't really articulate as much as I would like it to. Like it goes, you know, up and down, of course, but as far as side to side movement, it's sort of limited. Like it looks like it moves a lot this way, but trying to push it that way, I'm getting resistance and I don't want it to snap. Literally the very next important thing about your sewing machine is the motor. Now I get a lot of questions about what kind of motor do I use or do I use like the old school clutch motor or did I move to like a servo motor and the answer is I moved, I didn't even move. I started out with the servo motor because it was just, you know, praised by the person I got the sewing machine from and to be honest, I don't, I don't think I would move on to any other type of, of sewing machine motor, excuse me, other than the servo. Uh, I, I guess you have two different kinds. I don't know if anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but you have servo motors and then you have clutch motors. And the clutch motor is probably what your mom or your grandma had that was really, it was at the bottom of the machine as they all are, really clunky and just like looked like a, it looked like a car motor underneath your sewing machine. And I'm gonna show you guys what mine looks like. It's really small, really quiet. I'm gonna show you how it operates real quick. This little thing right here, it may not be little on the screen or anything like that, but Compared to the clutch motors, it's fairly small. The thing I love most about it is the fact that you guys, if you guys have ever had one of these, you guys know that you can adjust the speed of the stitch by this little turn dial here. Let's see if I can focus that in. Yeah, so right now this is at uh, 3,450. So that's, I'm assuming that's the stitches, but you can always go down to either zero, which doesn't matter. doesn't mean like it turns the machine off. It just means that it goes really, really slow. Let me give you guys a quick description on how that looks. So you guys can obviously see that with this knob, you get to almost control the intensity, I guess I would say, or the, I mean, the, obviously the speed, but man, it gets really intense when you have it all the way over here. I never put it that way. Maybe if I'm sewing a straight line for like three miles and I'll do it that way. But for the most part, um, I've been sewing for a couple years now, so I probably have it about four notches up. That's where I feel more comfortable at. I can go slow if I, if I press the, the pedal right here maybe like, I don't know, a little bit, it'll go slow. If I want it to go faster, then all I have to do is, is you know, press it, the wheel, uh, I'm sorry, the pedal harder, like I floor it and it goes, it's almost like a car. Um, I don't know about the clutch motors, but apparently one speed is all you get. A subscriber to my old channel had asked me a very specific question and I hope you're watching right now because I'm gonna try my best to describe it. Apparently he has the same sewing machine that I have and he was asking that in order to lift up the needle here, you have to turn this knob right here, right? And so you, obviously you can tell the needle goes up and down whenever I turn this knob. Now his question was, or her, I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but it's really stiff and hard, pause, to move this up and down. There is a very easy fix for that, and I'm gonna show you. By lightly pressing your foot on the pedal, you're able to move this dial way more easily than you would otherwise. Like I can move it with two fingers and it's good versus if it's off, it's stiff, it's rigid and just unruly to work with. I know that's what I thought when I first started using it, but lightly press. If you press too hard, you're going to engage it and it's going to go lightly press and it'll glide like it was like, like the way it, you would think it was supposed to glide. I hope that answered your question. If it did not, please just leave a comment on this video below and I will make a video describing what I think you're talking about.
there you have it. That was just a really brief description on the type of tools that I use going into like my cutting material and my sewing machine. If you have any other questions, please leave them down below in the comments and I would answer it via text or if you're requesting it, I'll make another video for it. So at this time, I really want to thank the new people who are subscribing to the channel and leaving me positive feedback. I definitely appreciate it. And some people from New York and from any state up north, you guys kind of say what's up to me. What's up, guys? Thank you guys so much for following the channel. And please go follow me on Instagram at HQ Clothiers and my personal one at Moses underscore Vega. And I will see you guys in the next one.